Hi there, today I'm going to share a set of cards created with the Newton's Nook Stamp Timber Loads of Thanks stamp set. This is an exclusive for Simon Says Stamp for Stamp Timber. Um, limited edition, available while supplies last. I'm creating a set of cards here. They're very clean and simple, but they feature some partial masking. So a single layer card, but masking out that wagon portion to put different images inside the wagon. What is fantastic about this stamp set is that it comes with this adorable little dog with a wheelbarrow and barrow and uh, there are several images that can be used inside. There is a cat with pumpkins, another dog with pumpkins, some leaves, some apples, a little bunny in some leaves. I'm going to feature three of those today but you could make as many of these as you want. I did die cut this rectangle, you could also trim it out with cardstock if you rather, from smooth white cardstock. This is the Nina smooth white heavyweight cardstock and I'm going to stamp all of the dog pushing the wheelbarrow images first. I'm using an ink for Copic coloring since that's what I'm going to use to color. Once I have that done, I did already stamp the image on some masking paper and then I only partially die cut, not die cut, fussy cut the mask and that's because I only need that portion of it right around the top edge of the wheelbarrow so that the image looks like it's inside. So I'm stamping the three that I'm using, the cat and the pumpkins, the dog and the pumpkins, and then the whole bunch of apples lining up the mask each time. What this does is it makes this look like a full image. It makes this look like this is the whole stamp image instead of two different stamps. It automatically gives you an adorable little scene. So super cute, really, really clever. I absolutely love it. Once I have stamped all the images, I'm going to go ahead and stamp my greetings. And I did switch up my ink here simply because I'm not really coloring over this, so I don't really need an ink for Copic coloring. Um, there is going to be a little bit of Copic ink down there because I really felt like I needed to ground my images. I'll talk a little bit about that later. However, I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Black Dye Ink. It's a nice dark black ink which I really wanted my greeting to show up really well. I kind of feel like the space between the dog and the wheelbarrow has a nice little um, spot perfect for the greeting. So each of my greetings is featured right there down below. And I switched up the greeting. There are four different ones in this stamp set. I figured why not? Let's use a whole bunch of them. I'm lining them up using the grid on the Misty to help make sure that I get it perfectly straight or as straight as possible. And once I have all of my stamping done, I'm going to start coloring. In the finished card, you probably noticed that there are some little hearts. That was a last minute um, decision. I call it my game time decision. So as I got to the end of the card and I looked at it, I was like, it needs a little something else. Little hearts are always a great finishing touch. I am coloring all of the dog pushing the wheelbarrow exactly the same. I am only going to share one of those just for sake of getting through this video. There is a lot of coloring. While these are very clean and simple cards, the coloring really is the focal point of the design. So cute. I love Newton's Nook. They're very well known for their adorable dog and cat and bunny images. Um, their critter images, I guess I should say. Always has fantastic designs and I think a lot of these would coordinate really nicely with maybe some other Newton's Nook images you already own. These very much are fall themed as far as the pumpkins and the apples and the leaves. However, it wouldn't necessarily have to be for that. Um, kind of up to you, but building scenes with these is just so fantastic. Beautiful, adorable little images that are so fun to color. I The same technique with the partial masking could be used if you wanted to watercolor. If you wanted to use Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers, 
colored pencils, whatever coloring medium you want to use, this technique will work for. I've shared a lot of masking techniques. I've been kind of on a roll of not using coordinating dyes and things like that lately. Kind of stretching myself outside of my comfort zone. It's so easy to use coordinating dies, and so I've been trying to find different ways to create cards without using those dies. We can always get lots more of the stamp sets if we don't have the coordinating dies, because oftentimes they're quite pricey. So it's just kind of one of those things where once I get on a roll, sometimes I tend to keep going with it until it exhausts itself. Finished coloring in the wheelbarrow, coloring in the collar for the dog. I have listed out what I'm coloring and then the colors I used to do that. I know a lot of you have really liked this particular way of how I've been listing out the Copic markers I'm using just for reference, especially if you like a certain color combination. I hope this helps if you're needing to know exactly what I used. The pumpkins. One of my favorite color combinations. I did mix it up a little bit. I usually use something a little different for my mid-tone, but I went with YR18 with my other colors today. And I like to darken up the bottom of those pumpkins where they appear where they appear to be sitting in that wheelbarrow with a little E57. You can always blend it out with your yellow reds or oranges or whatever you might be using. I think the dogs kind of look like, I think they could be several different breeds. I think I was kind of thinking along the lines of labs with a yellow lab and a black lab. The little black lab sitting here in the basket. A couple shades of warm gray are really all that's going to be needed for this. Trying to build up to black with your gray markers, you want to start light and just kind of pull in that dark color a little bit here and there. Otherwise it gets so super dark, which this is fairly dark as it is. I will go back with a black gel pen later and add that detail for the eye. It's really will help make that dog's face pop a little bit. Color in the collar here with those same red colors I used for the wheelbarrow. Now I have already pre-colored the other two images all the same except for the images that go inside. So this had pumpkins, same color for the pumpkins as the dog. But for the cat, I'm gonna pull in a little bit of a lighter warm gray, the warm gray two, but still use warm gray five and eight to make the little stripes on the cat. A little R00 for the insides of the ears and the nose. Darken up where the cat is peeking out of the wheelbarrow. And there is my second one finished. And finally, I'm gonna finish with the apples. Now, you're gonna see a little bit of a green color here. I tried to make the top of the apples green. I have done another card, it's probably been about a year ago now, where I did some green in the apples and it was a lot of work to get that blended into the red. And I really love the results and I kind of, that's what I was going for here. And it was going to take too long, I think. <laughs> um, I was kind of in a hurry. And I quickly nixed that idea because the blending was not going well. I did not have the patience for it today. So I went ahead and colored over those and they are just going to be some solid red apples. You have to kind of go with your gut feelings. Some days you feel like spending that time, some days you don't. The leaves for my apples are uh, YG95 and 99. And the apples themselves are R0529 and R29. I pulled in a little bit of the R, one of the R colors I used for the wheelbarrow. I think R, um, eight, nine, just along some of the edges to darken it up a little bit. Anywhere where I thought there might be a darker shadow. Now I have some Desert Storm cardstock here that I'm going to mat these panels on. And originally I was going to leave them just like this. I'm adding the black detail to the eyes, um, pulling that in to really make them pop. 
And as I was doing this, and then I went ahead and grabbed a white pen to add highlights for the pumpkins, this all helps bring what is a very clean and simple card. It adds lots of interest. Highlights to the wheelbarrow, highlights to the wheel, um, a little highlight on the collar of the dog, the apples, the pumpkins, all of that. And as I was working on this, I really felt like I needed something to ground the images. They appear to be floating out there. I am not really known for doing a lot of clean and simple cards. Um, and these are very clean and simple. I love to do scenes, even if it is a very simple scene. And in order to make these images work better for what I personally like, I really felt like I needed to ground them. I'm gonna take those gr uh, yellow green markers that I used for the leaves and I'm going to draw in a little line with my darkest marker, which is YG99. Very, very thin line, very simple. Then I'm going to pull that color out a little bit more with yellow green 95 and then I'm going to soften those edges even more and pull that color out even more with the yellow green 91. So darkest to lightest. And that is going to ground the images. It makes them not appear like they're floating out in outer space. It's still a very clean and simple card. I'm flicking in, making some little grass images with YG 95 and 99. And this instantly worked for me. I loved how this looked. I thought this was much, much more my style. I decided to go around with the BG10, which is a cool shadow, very, very lightly go around the whole image with this marker and add just a tiny shadow. If it gets too heavy at any point, which it did on my images, just a couple little places where I was like, oh, that's way too dark of a line. I like to take the colorless blender and just smooth it out a little bit. It's not going to blend or erase, but it will kind of spread that ink out. And it almost appears to lighten it a little bit just because it makes that ink spread on out. So there will be a couple places where I'll go in with the colorless blender and do that. You wouldn't really have to do this step if you didn't want to. I think it helps keep those images popping just a little bit more, especially with a clean and simple card like this. There's that colorless blender. I'm gonna smooth out a few lines that I just felt maybe were a little too harsh. Not everywhere, but a couple little places here and there. If you get too much colorless blender, it could uh, pull out color that you've already colored and kind of make a mess. I'm going to attach the white panel to that desert storm or that craft colored cardstock and then attach this whole thing to a white top fold card base. That's what all of my cards are going to look like. Now at this point, this is where I wanted to pull in some little hearts. I think the little hearts would be will make a nice finishing touch. And because there's a heart image in the stamp set, I went ahead and stamped a trio. I usually like odd numbers of embellishments. So I'm gonna stamp a trio of three hearts for each image, color those in with the same red colors I used for anything else red besides the apples um, in the image. So anything on the wheelbarrow or the dog collar that's in red, this is the same color combination. And then once these are colored in, I can go over them with glossy accents and that's going to give me some nice glossy raised images. I had contemplated maybe adding die cut heart images, which would be fine, little sequin hearts, other little heart um, embellishments of some sort, but there is a heart image in this stamp set and I often like to make my own embellishments. The glossy accents is going to make these raised and add a little bit of interest to the design, which is very flat. It's going to be very easy to mail and really finishes off a clean and simple card super nicely. So I'm going to attach all of my panels to these white top fold card bases. 
I'm gonna go ahead and take my glossy accents. A fine tip applicator attached to glossy accents makes it so much easier to get that adhesive in those tight, small spaces. I like to use the little tip there to pull it down if I need to into the tip of the heart. I've added glossy accents to the noses on any of the critters as well. So the dogs all have it and the cat. Finish up this last one. I did end up using all three colors on my hearts. You could probably get by with just two if you wanted to. Really up to you. But adding that little bit of ground or grass underneath the images and finishing with some hearts instantly adds some awesome interest to these clean and simple cards. Thanks for joining me today for these cards or these cards featuring partial masking using the Newton's Nook Stamp Timber Loads of Thanks stamp set. The supplies I use to complete these cards is listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more cards featuring Stamp Timber stamp sets from Simon Says Stamp. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.